well number theory plays a very very important role in mathematics and so today here i am with a very important theorem that is for mass little theorem of the branch of number theory that is of mathematics and well this theorem is very important since Perry de Fermat was a very great mathematician and he introduced this theorem and before introducing this theorem he wrote a linear Diophantine equation in a form of say x to the power n plus y to the power n is equals to z to the power n. So this theorem, uh, this is a question which was arised by Fermat and uh, he said that uh, the proof of this theorem is in the Fermat's last, uh, this known as the Fermat's last theorem and uh, it can be fine but today I am going to deal with this Fermat's little theorem. So let us see what does it state and how does it, it benefits us. So first of all we are going to write its statement. So what does Fermat's little theorem state? So well it states that if we take any number p which is a prime number so if p is a prime and the GCD that is the greatest common divisor of say a and p is equals to 1 then then what we have we have that a to the power p minus 1 is divisible by p that is a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to sorry here I have done a little mistake a to the power p minus 1 minus 1 it is congruent to 1 mod p so this is the statement if p is a prime number and the gcd of a and p is 1 then a to the power p minus 1 minus 1 is divisible by p that is a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to minus 1 mod p so let us see its proving how can we prove this statement first of all let me generalize this what does this mean this line this is divisible by p or what does this mean so if we will subtract minus 1 to the both the side it means a to the power p minus 1 and minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p or well we can say by this and this with the modulo concept that a to the power p minus 1 minus 1 must be divisible by p or when we divide this number when p divides this means this number is divisible by p then the remainder that we'll get is 0. So this is what this statement states. So now comes to the proof. Uh, well, we know with the binomial expansion, we are going to prove this with the binomial expansion. So let us write binomial expansion or using binomial expansion. what we have say we have x1 plus x2 2 to the power p x1 plus x2 to the power p is equals to x1 to the power p plus pc1 x1 to the power p minus 1 and x2 pc2 x1 to the power p minus 2 x2 square and it will go on and on till we have p c p minus 1 let us write 2 from last also x1 to the power 1 and x2 to the power p minus 1 plus p c p x2 to the power or we can write it as 1 say so here it was pc0 that's why it is 1 and here it is 1 so what we can write we can write it as x1 to the power p 
plus x2 to the power p this one and this one comes together and rest will have p it will contain p it will contain p times p minus 1 divided by factorial 2 means each term accepting this and this will have p in their expansion so what we can write we can write it as a function of p means this function that is fp contains all the elements or all those terms which are divisible by p means this number is divisible by p this term is divisible by p and so on till this term from this term to this term it is divisible by p so we can write it as fp or we can write it as say if we will proceed it as x1 to the power p plus x2 to the power p mod p since it is divisible by p simple the remainder will be this now what we can write x1 plus x2 to the power p now what we can write if we will increase the terms x1 x2 till xr or xn or whatsoever what we will get let's see from the general case we will have x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 plus say xa till a we are required a that's why we are taking till a to the power p is congruent to x1 to the power p plus x2 to the power p plus dot 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 plus x a to the power p mod p simple simple is that now what we will have suppose we put we will have a supposition or we have a putting so if we put x1 equals to x2 equals to equals to x a equals to 1 suppose we take this number 1 this 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 all then what we will get so we have what we have we simply have 8 1 1 1 till a we have a a to the power p is congruent to a mod p now if we have we are provided with that uh, the gcd of a and p is 1 so a and p is equals to 1 so we can write it as a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p or if we will subtract 1 then we will have a to the power so this was we we needed to prove we have already proved it so from here we can write a to the power p minus 1 minus 1 is divisible by p so this is the theorem or this is for mass little theorem